Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Retro and in this video we're gonna take a look at the Lucasfilm Classic Loom. This is a big box PC game that came out in 1990 and was one of the first point and click adventures by LucasArts as we knew them now, but back in the day it was called Lucasfilm. The sticker on the front tells us it works on IBM PC and most other platforms. It requires a mouse and it comes with 5.25 inch floppies, so the nice big floppy floppies. Uh, the sides of the box just show the Loom logo and the back of the box tells us something about the game. In Loom you play as Bobbin, a young boy who is the last of the Weaver's Guild and it is your task to prevent an unspeakable catastrophe from happening to the universe. Uh, in this game you have stunning high resolution 3D landscape, detailed animation and special effects and elegant point and click control of characters, objects and magic spells. So that sounds like advertising text for any regular um, point and click adventure. As you can see on the box shots, it's really 90s uh, gameplay and 90s graphic style and uh, I dig that. From a collector's point of view, it's really cool that Loom comes with a lot of extras. It has an audio cassette, it has a book of patterns and it has a lot more as you can see here. So let's start. First up is just some uh, advertising sleeve. The price list for other games on other platforms. How I would love to go back in time to order me a Maniac Mansion and Zack McCracken for $44.95. Those were the days. The next item is a folder that shows information about other Lucasfilm games. Not just the prices, but uh, actual screenshots and information about them. Um, first here you see Battle Hawks 1942 and Maniac Mansion, but there are also some information about Zack McCracken and the Indiana Jones games. Then we have the floppies, 5.25 inch like I already said, and they're still in great shape. They haven't been bent, the stickers are still on and uh, they look great, so that's a good thing. If they work, I honestly don't know and to be honest, I don't really care about that either. So what you see on the left, the red thing is a little glasses that you use to read the hint book and the next sleeve was something about the Roland sound card. And here we have the reference card, which you can use, uh, which is like a fast guide to, to the game. It has all the information you need to start a quick game. How to set it up, how to play, which keys to use and uh, what the game expects of you in certain situations. This is like the card you could have at hand when you were playing the game. The next leaflet shows that the game came out at a turning point era. 5.25 inch floppies were still the standard, but you could get a free change for 3.5 inch floppies, which is a really nice service in my opinion. Then we have the manual. And the manual has pretty much everything that the reference card didn't have. It has the background story, it has some information about the game, how to use the book of patterns and uh, how to use this manual. It gives you a step-by-step -step intro into how to get started, how to move your character, etc. Uh, what the options are in the game and it even has a couple of hints to uh, get you started. Like how you can open the swan's egg, how you get to a certain tent, etc. Um, it's not like a guide but it's a really really short and small step to get started in a game. And I remember from back in these days sometimes these little uh, hints were really valuable because you could just not figure it out yourself. And then we've reached the book of patterns where our little red thingy comes in place. You can use this to decipher or to unlock the codes that are hidden in uh, the red text. Um, it's not hidden very well. I've seen hint books where you really need the red glasses to see something, but uh, with this one you can just see through. Um, it has a really cool text on the front of the book and it says, A wise spellweaver always writes in pencil. As in, don't mess this book up because it's a really cool book. The rest of the book is filled with pages about different spells you can learn and use and it also has a place to uh, write down these spells. Like I said, in pencil please. Uh, it has for instance folding, invisibility, terror, desire, waterproofing, reflection and many many more. In the back of the manual again you have different uh, notes that you can use to, uh, to use these spells. The hint book you see here is something that didn't came standard with the set. Previous owner that I bought this game from bought it and uh, added it to the set. It's something you had to buy separately normally. 
Um, again, the red glasses uh, are used to read the manual or the hint book, and this time you really do need them because the red text that is uh, drawn through everything, which reads long after the passing of the second shadow when dragons rule the twilight, really obscures the light blue text and it's very, very hard to read through them. So without the red plastic, it's uh, almost impossible to read. The cool thing is that this guide or hint book doesn't have the answers. It doesn't show you step by step what to do, but it's more a questionnaire. What to do with this egg? Hey, it's dark in here, etc. So the last item is something really cool that I can't think of a different game that has it as well. And it's an actual old school cassette. Recorded on it is a 30 minute audio drama that vividly brings the characters to life. At least that's what the box is. I haven't listened to it because I don't have any equipment that can play a tape. So I hope you enjoyed watching this unboxing because this is truly one of the coolest big boxes I have in my collection. There are hardly any other games that come with this amount of cool stuff that are not special editions. So thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye.